turns out we were all wrong. The fourth flight of Starship wasn't as perfect as we thought. It actually encountered a big problem. In fact, a leaked image of the final moments of the booster during its fourth flight has been widely circulated on social media, seemingly showing the booster exploding at the end of its return path. So what's the truth behind this? Is this bad for SpaceX? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Recently, SpaceX's ardent social media fans were taken by surprise when ex-user Bocus Brain shared an image of what appears to be an explosion of the Super Heavy booster on Flight 4. The image shows an orange mushroom cloud visible from a buoy similar to those SpaceX uses to capture the final perspective of rocket tests. Shortly after the image was shared, the space engineer conducted a detailed analysis to support his thoughts. Thanks to the space engineer for these fresh perspectives. Be sure to support him by following his page. Before delving into Space Engineer's analysis, I gotta tell you that the footage we're discussing has not yet been officially confirmed by SpaceX. Therefore, all space enthusiasts like us are encouraged to examine the evidence and draw our own conclusions. So the Space Engineer provided engineers that serve as clues about the authenticity of the suspicion. A square frame is visible in the bottom right, and the perspective appears warped, suggesting the image was captured from a monitor displaying video footage. The distortions in the image are likely due to overlapping camera lenses and water droplets, which is consistent with footage taken out at sea. A visible seam between two lenses in the wider frame further supports this interpretation. The way light from the explosion diffuses through the buoy's signal light is particularly noteworthy. The light appears slightly orange, diffused in the center and absent from the edges, with near-perfect blending between the explosion and the buoy. This level of detail would be challenging to fake convincingly and suggests the signal light casing is likely made of plastic somewhere between a quarter and an eighth inch thick. Cloud formations on the footage offer additional insights. The nearly identical clouds in both shots suggest the explosion occurred mere seconds after touchdown. There's a visible reflection and glow on the clouds, which is notoriously difficult to replicate artificially. Interestingly, the cloud structure appears mirrored because one view from above the clouds and the other from below. The explosion itself has been a point of contention, with some arguing it wouldn't produce a mushroom cloud or that it appears too large. However, the mushroom cloud formation indicates the explosion was lower pressure than the ambient atmosphere, which is consistent with this type of event. Based on known super heavy dimensions, the explosion diameter is estimated to be between 210 and 260 meters. While this is indeed a massive fireball, larger than previous suborbital mishaps, it's consistent with the increased propellant load of the Super Heavy booster compared to the Starship's upper stage. To put this in perspective, the Starship upper stage typically has about 15 tons of residual propellant, while the Super Heavy booster has around 20 tons. This difference, along with additional autogenic gas not included in these estimates, could account for the larger explosion size. The most likely failure scenario based on this analysis involves the vehicle's downcomer, transfer tube rupturing upon impact with the ocean surface. Telemetry data suggests the booster was traveling at approximately 110 kilometers an hour at impact. The ruptured downcomer would have allowed propellants to mix between tanks, leading to detonation after a brief period. This failure mode is similar to what occurred with the SN10 prototype, albeit with a much shorter time frame. It's worth noting that the flight termination system, FTS, was likely safe during descent, as a standard procedure. No FTS deactivation callout was heard during the Flight 4 broadcast, but it's important to understand that FTS cannot be unsaved without a proper ground connection, making it highly unlikely to have been the cause of the explosion. Supporting evidence for this analysis comes from various sources, including EPA documents describing similar scenarios, visual comparisons with previous Starship prototype explosions, and the absence of vehicle debris at the estimated landing location. Another piece of evidence was also provided by La Padre, who published infrasound data from the landing of Booster 11. The data illustrates a pattern where sound waves diminish after the booster engine stops and shuts down and intensifies during critical phases such as the boostback burn, landing burn, and the suspected explosion time. Particularly around the estimated explosion time, 
the infrasound waves appear dense and strong, indicating increased activity on the booster during that period. This could explain the continuous fire observed in the live video when the booster touched the water. This hypothesis is quite clear and somewhat more convincing. However, I want to remind you that these analyses are based on expert data and observations. To get an accurate confirmation, we still need to wait for an official statement from SpaceX. I'd also like to know your thoughts on this issue. Please comment below, and if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe. That motivates us to keep pumping these videos out for you each day. Okay. Speaking of explosions, they become quite common for SpaceX and Elon Musk. When SpaceX first attempted to land the Falcon 9 on water, they encountered a series of explosions. This is not unusual for early tests in the aerospace industry. These explosions happen for various reasons, including the strong impact on the water, the intrusion of seawater into sensitive electronic systems, and the reaction between remaining fuels. However, more recently, when a Falcon 9 rocket had to land on water instead of land on land as planned, it did not explode. This was actually quite surprising and could be considered an issue. Why is that? The rocket not exploding could indicate that its safety and deactivation systems didn't work as expected. In many cases, the controlled destruction of the rocket after an emergency landing is necessary to prevent potential hazards such as fuel leaks or uncontrolled explosions. In the case of Starship, a much larger and more complex rocket than Falcon 9, one should expect this event to result in an explosion in some manner. On the other hand, based on what we know so far, SpaceX and Elon have always been transparent about the issues in the rocket development process. Elon Musk even seems to enjoy the massive explosions and has eagerly shared all the explosions caused by his rockets. A conclusion will probably be reached as soon as possible. But in reality, explosions are sure to decrease as SpaceX upgrades the landing techniques for Starship. SpaceX will implement methods such as catching the rocket mid-air with Mechazilla arms or landing on a drone ship. These methods will enhance accuracy. However, SpaceX must address the issues that could lead to explosions on both Starship and Super Heavy. If using the Mechazilla arm landing method, an explosion could damage critical systems like the chopsticks or the launch tower, leading to unsuccessful catch attempts. The first attempt to steer Starship towards a new landing milestone is the fifth Starship flight. It won't be long before we witness this launch. SpaceX's Starship, the world's most powerful rocket, is set to take flight in just four weeks, according to CEO Elon Musk. This upcoming launch will mark the fifth test flight for the massive 400-foot-tall, 122-meter vehicle, and is expected to happen in early August. The rapid turnaround for Flight 5 comes on the heels of Starship's successful fourth test flight on June 6th. During that mission, both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage performed as planned, separating on time and splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico and Indian Ocean, respectively. This upcoming flight will feature a new element. SpaceX aims to bring the Super Heavy Booster back for a pinpoint landing on Starbase's launch mount. This ambitious maneuver will be aided by the chopstick arms of the facility's launch tower. The primary goal of Flight 5 is to further test Starship's reentry capabilities. Musk has stated that they hope to get much deeper into the atmosphere during re-entry, ideally through max heating. This objective builds on the progress made during Flight 4, which saw Starship successfully re-enter Earth's atmosphere despite losing many heat shield tiles and sustaining damage to a flap. SpaceX continues to make rapid progress in developing Starship with each flight providing valuable data and experience. The company is working towards making Starship fully reusable, a key factor in reducing launch costs and enabling ambitious missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. If successful, Flight 5 could represent another significant step forward in the development of this revolutionary spacecraft, bringing us closer to a new era of space exploration and transportation. Starship Super Heavy is a key component of SpaceX's ambitious plan for space exploration and human colonization of other planets. It consists of two main parts, the Starship spacecraft and the Super Heavy rocket booster. Here's a breakdown of each component and their roles. Starship is the spacecraft portion of the system. Designed for a variety of missions, it's intended to be a fully reusable spacecraft capable of carrying both crew and cargo. Super Heavy is the rocket booster that propels Starship into space. It plays a critical role in the initial phase of the launch. It's equipped with up to 33 Raptor engines. Super Heavy provides the necessary thrust to lift the Starship spacecraft into orbit. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.